I just want to remind you, if you haven't got your packet, there might be, there's a few left. I would say maybe 100 packets left. Get your packet. Uh, it'll have some homework. The homework's really easy. It's not difficult. There's today, this week, we're going to focus on session one in your workbook. You're going to read chapter one, um, uh, I think pages one through 23, really simple. And when you go through session one, there's four videos, and then it has fill in the blanks in, in, your, in, in, well, in your workbook, and you work on that together. So it's not very hard at all, but I do know this, the effort you put in will determine what you get out of this. I, I would also recommend or commit, just commit to showing up to the next three sessions. It's just four sessions, three sessions. At the end, if you come to all four sessions, we'll even get, and you sign up and you're, you're committed to come, um, we'll even have a certificate of completion that you completed your four sessions of Marriage Challenge. There's gonna be some people that actually, this is gonna be part of their marriage counseling and uh, on, on May 2nd, they're actually gonna get married. We're gonna have a mass wedding and they're actually going to get married. And there's going to be another group that are going to renew their vows on that day. So today what I want to do is cover three keys to get in the most out of this marriage challenge. Say it with me. Three keys. Number one key. Key number one. Be willing to change. We must be willing to do what we've never done to get results we've always wanted. I want results that I've never really attained. And this is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to change my attitude, change my behavior to get different results. It's not just wishing, it's application. You could stay in wish mode your whole life. But there's, there's, there's a scripture in, in Proverbs 26, 11 says this. As a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. Really what it's saying, it is foolish to think we can do the same things over and over and get different results. So the dog returns to his vomit, but a fool repeats his foolishness. And why does he repeat it? Because he thinks, this time I will get different results. Could it be that we're going from relationship to relationship, but we have not changed? And we're hoping that this next relationship will work, but we're still applying the same methods, the same thinking, or even saying it like the scripture says, the same foolishness. And we're repeating it. You've heard this saying, and a lot of us have heard this saying, the definition of insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Say it with me, I am ready to change. Change is not easy. Change is not easy because uh, we don't like to change. We like things. Are, we want, this is what we want. We want them to change. You change, but I don't want to change. Because to change, that means you have to, you're going to have to admit you need change. And you're going to have to deny yourself from doing the things that maybe you've developed a habit of doing. And it could be, just be conversations. It could be impatience. Like, all right, I'm impatient. Um, like for me, I need some change. Like I'm impatient. Um, wait, like Lisa takes too long to get ready. <laughs> it's been 30 years, 31 to be precise. But 31 years and I've talked to her, Lisa. I go, let's do this. Why don't, this is what we do on our day off because we go on a date, a date night or a date day, whatever, on our day off. So what I do is I'll sleep in a little longer. And I go, why don't you wake up and get ready? Because I'll take like two, 10 minutes. You take like two hours. So why don't we just do that? But it doesn't matter. Because it's a rule. You're going to wait no matter what. So I've realized that I cannot change Lisa. Lisa. Maybe she needs to hear this and change, but, but I'm the one that needs to change. I've been waiting for her to change for 31 years. Let's talk about my problems today. And it hasn't happened. So now I realize I need to change and practice being more patient. So this is what I've been practicing. I've still not mastered it yet. 
But I'll just, I'll just, I'll say, okay, honey, whenever you're ready, this is crazy, just let me know. <laughs> That's what we're working on right now. And then what I do is I make a list of things that I could do around the house. And when she's ready, whenever she's ready, she'll just let me know. Because what I used to do was go, into the, go in the car and start honking the horn. <laughs> that did not speed her up one bit. So, guys, it doesn't work. Honk, honk, honk. And it doesn't even matter if you have a bad attitude when she gets in the car. What took you so? It doesn't change. So we're here to change, right? And I'm asking you personally, what areas do you need to change in? Not what area your spouse needs to change in. Because if you focus on other change, you'll never experience a change personally. Okay, so a fool, what he does, he repeats the same foolishness and expects different results. And unless we change our thinking, our results won't change. I'm here to change my thinking. I'm here to change my attitude. I'm here to change my way of living. I'm here to change my habits. I'm here for God to change my character. I want change because I want different results. I want better results. Say, Pastor, do you want, I mean, is your marriage really struggling? Our marriage is not struggling. Our marriage is strong, but I know this, it can still be way better if I'm willing to change. I'm going to get that. There's a scripture that says this in Luke 13, 3. It says, I tell you, Jesus said this. No, but unless you repent, or that means this, change your old way of thinking. Unless you change your old way of thinking, what he's saying is you're going to keep on getting the same old results. I'll say it again. Unless we change our thinking, our old way of thinking, we're going to continue getting the same old results. So you know what that means? It's going to end the same always. Turn from your sinful ways. What it means, turn from your ways and start doing it my way. We're going to learn here. I'm going to give you an example of God's way. You know what God's way is? Forgive. You know what your, your way is and my way? Payback. And some of you guys are, have a master's in payback. Master's degree. Right? And, and some of you are so good at it, you don't even say a word now. You just, you give the silent, you're a silent assassin. What's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> Guys, if she says nothing, it's something. Because some of us are like clueless. Oh, nothing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's something. Right? It's, 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 it's silent assassins. And, and some of us are really good at payback. But if you're, if you're practicing payback, this is what's going to happen. You're going to keep on getting the results. You'll never change someone by trying to punish them. There has to be a day that we mature and realize I'm done paying back and I'm going to start forgiving and I'll let God deal with that hard head. Because as long as you're in the way trying to make people pay for what they've done, you're acting like God. Let God take, come on, let God take the revenge. Let God fix your stuff. Let God fix your husband or wife. It's not your job. Forgive. Try forgiveness. Today, someone needs to forgive someone because I, I'm not ignorant to think that in this room there hasn't been infidelity. I'm not ignorant to believe that in this room there hasn't been some abuse. I'm not ignorant in this room that, to think that there is no, no betrayal. There's been hurt. There's been pain. There's been loss. There's been abuse. But God has an answer. You can change. You can change. Your spouse can change. And that means your future can change. 
Because until you change, your results don't change. And I'll say this, your destiny doesn't change. Your destination doesn't change. Look what the scripture says. It says this, turn from your sinful ways and live changed lives. So it's not changing just thinking, it's changing behavior. And we got to practice, don't say practice. See, the old saying that practice makes perfect is right. That the more you practice the right behavior, the more that will become a habit. So not only do we change our thinking, we work on changing our behavior. I have to work on that. I told you guys this, I don't like taking out the trash. I still don't like taking out the trash. Especially when Lisa tells me to. <laughs> I'll do when I want to. And I think maybe because I got whippings when I was a kid for not taking out the trash, and it's still affecting me. <laughs> so you know what I did yesterday? I'm changing. You know what I did two days ago? I'm changing. The trash man comes on Monday, and I took out the trash on Friday. <laughs> the neighbors don't like it, but all the trash is in the front right there with all the trash cans right there in the street ready to go. I'm not going to be caught after Sunday night, after this great message, taking out trash. <laughs> but the, how many believe this, that we have to start changing our behavior? It's not just our thinking, our behavior Life is not luck. Relationships are not luck. You make them work by what you're applying. And, and, and we need to get this. Every one of us can change. I love that. So unless we change, look what the scripture says. It, changes, it says, turn from your sinful ways and live changed lives. You, because unless you repent and turn from your sinful ways, and live changed lives, you will all likewise perish. That means you're going to keep on being on the same track, keep on getting the results. That word perish means you'll end the ruin, you'll end the destruction. So if we don't change, the end remains the same. It's ruined. If you're going from one ruined relationship to another ruined relationship to another ruined relationship to another ruined relationship, it's time to look yourself in the mirror and say, maybe I'm part of the problem. It's not blaming people, it's taking personal responsibility. Let's say it again, I am willing to change. So we're gonna be confronted in these next few weeks on things that we do and how we could, things that we do right, we're gonna confirm. Things that we do wrong, we're gonna turn from those and be willing to say, I'm done doing it that way, my way, and I wanna do it God's way because I wanna start getting different results. So key number one, be willing to change. Key number two, put in the work to make it work. In order to succeed at anything, including our relationships, it is going to take work. And I would even say this, work with what you got. Say with me, work with what you got. Don't work on another field, work on your field. Well, pastor, all we got is dirt in our field. Work your dirt. Well, pastor, all we got is dirt and manure. Work your dirt and work the manure in the dirt. <laughs> all your problems, all your difficulties are meant to enhance you, advance you, mature you. They're not meant to defeat you. Work your dirt and work your manure in your dirt. Someone just got that. Praise the Lord. So what'd you learn? I got a lot of manure. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> want, get this, want without hard work will end in want. What does that mean? Just because you want healthy relationships, you want to succeed, you want to have a breakthrough, you want to change, Want isn't enough. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some work. Some of the work. Showing up here four weeks in a row. Someone say work. Let's read this scripture about work. 
in Proverbs 13, 4, it says this, no matter how much a lazy person may want something, he will never get it. What? What? Wait, get What? It's saying that a lazy person wants, but he never gets what he wants. What is laziness? Pastor, do you just call me lazy? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> because I think all of us have some lazy spots. You know what laziness is? You don't do what you should do, what you know you should do, but you fail to do it, not because you have a disability, you have lack of application or desire to get it done. You know what the Bible says about a lazy person? He doesn't leave his house and go to work because he says there's a lion outside. And what he's describing as someone, instead of executing, all they do is make excuses. Are you ex uh, an excusist or an executionist? I don't know. I don't know. Execution things. Yeah, you're killing people. Or you're <laughs> the execute. Someone said, "Yeah, I just executed somebody last week." I'm a <laughs> In our neighborhood, it's probably somebody that did. I don't know. <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm saying. Do you make excuses or do you execute? I'm lazy in certain areas. One of the areas I'm lazy in right now is working out. Like, I know I should be working out. For sure I know I should be working out. And I walk by my treadmill every day. And my treadmill looks at me and I look at it. I go, not today. Maybe tomorrow, though. And this is the idea. I want to be in shape and I want to be healthy. But there's a problem. As long as I'm lazy in that area, I'm only going to have wants. And my wants will never come to pass. And you could apply that to every area of your life. I want a better marriage. Are you ready to do this? Look at the second half of the scripture. Lazy people have wants. And will never get it. Imagine living a life that you could have, but you never worked to achieve it. I want freedom. Are you ready to work for your freedom? Of course God will set you free, but it's going to take some work. It's going to take showing up to classes. It's going to take showing up to church. It's going to take changing your friends. It's going to take, come on, it's going to take some adjustments. You're going to have to put some effort in to get results in. We're living in a world, and I will say this, a microwave world. It's so microwave that we have ovens and we don't use them anymore. Most of us haven't used our oven for a long time because we don't have the patience to wait a half hour. But I know that things in the oven taste better. If you want to have a microwave of life, all you're going to eat is those cheap chimichangas. <laughs> That's all you're ever going to have. This is good. No, they're better. They're real burritos some out there. There's a real casserole you could have. I'm, I'm getting hungry right now. But look, look at this. A, a lazy person wants, but they never get it. A hard worker will get everything he wants. Someone that has a want and is willing to work for it, this is what he's saying. Every want will become a reality. This is what we want we want to put in minimum effort and get maximum returns. But the truth is, if you put minimum effort, you're going to get minimum returns. If you put maximum effort, you're going to get maximum returns. Let's continue talking about work for a second. This is very important because if you don't know this, what I'm ready to say, you'll be tricked. And this is it. It always takes more effort to succeed than we originally thought or we think. We need to be careful that we are not underestimating what it will take to make it work. It will take more than you thought to make it work. It'll take more than you thought to make your relationships work, 
to make your marriage work. And that's why God has made marriage a lifetime commitment because it's going to take a lifetime to work on it. Your best marriage is not in your past. Your best marriage is in your future if you're willing to put some work into it. Be careful that you're not underestimating what it's going to take to open a business, what it's going to take to start a ministry, what it's taken, what it, what it, what it's taken to build a church like this. It took a lot more than I ever thought. I always thought, like, the effort that we've put in, we should be farther than we are today. Because it, just do this, practice this. It'll take 10 times more effort than you ever thought. 10 times more forgiveness, 10 times more obstacles, 10 times more study, 10 times more work, 10 times more effort. It will take way more than you ever thought to make it work. So the Bible says, why build if you're not going to count the cost? What are you saying is, make sure that you have a commitment and you're willing to pay the price to make it work. That's why we do vows before you get married. Until death do we part. What? For reals? Yeah, for reals. That's the, now if you're not willing to make a commitment until death do you part, you're not ready to get married. You're not counting the cost. Don't do it. I, it's almost like this. We're almost thinking if it's hard, God's given me a sign. It must not be God. Because isn't it, isn't love supposed to be easy? <laughs> See right now Jack's over there. Come on. He hasn't married yet. <laughs> Come on, pastors. Preach it. His fiance sitting right there. And they're, they're, they're little birds around. Around them. This is awesome. Woo. <laughs> Until they get married. And I'm not saying that all of a sudden he's going to turn to Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. All of a sudden. What I'm saying is until you get married... You don't even know what marriage is until you're in the nitty gritty and you find out that he, he doesn't clean up after himself. And she don't cook like she used to cook when you guys were just going out. <laughs> hey, watch it over there. He said, preach. I don't want to know. He's getting in trouble already. She slapped around. Pap, shut up. We'll talk about it when we get home. You got two hands, cook yourself. All the kind of stuff going on, right? <laughs> I mean, we got some issues. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right. I'm going to give you some advice. Never decrease the target, increase the effort. The target is not the problem. It's the activity level that needs to be adjusted. Every time we do these marriage challenges, there are couples that take this super serious and they get super results. That means they show up to every session. They get the packet. They do the homework. They read the book. They go on date nights. They put some effort in. They journal change that they need to personally make. They work at it and they get wonderful results. And then there's other people that I hear that show up for one session and they can't show up the next session. If you can't show up four times in a row, don't expect any change in your relationship. The homework's very simple. All I would say, why not, if you're going to, Spend 30 days on this earth anyways, why not maximize it? If you're going to go through a marriage challenge, why not get the pole program instead of part of the program? Well, pastor, I'll tell you why. That's going to take change. That's going to take work. There's always someone that says, I don't want to do the work. I don't want to do the homework. Understand this. I don't, I don't like to read. We're here to change. 
If you don't like to read, that's all besides the point. We're not asking you to do stuff you like. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to put some work into this. You're going to have to change. You got to do stuff you don't like and develop new habits. I don't like going to church. So what? <laughs> See, this is the problem. You can't be driven, led by your likes and dislikes and, 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 and lusts and all. That's, that's immaturity. It, when you're mature and you want to grow, you say, you know, right now I don't like exercising. I don't right now, I don't even like reading, but I know I should be. So I'm gonna, I don't even like doing homework, but I'm going to start putting in some effort because I want to get some change. I want to get some results. I want I want to get, I, I want to start getting a place that will finally overcome what I've been dealing with. Something has to change. And the thing that has to change is me. And I'm going to put in the work to get the results. The target is not the problem. It's the activity level that needs to be adjusted. So practical work. Pra uh, purchase the book and journal and do all the homework. Super simple stuff anyways. Attend all four sessions. I, and I would even say this. If you're married, do weekly date nights. Well, that's going to cost you money. <laughs> Here you go. If you don't invest, you're not going to get no return. Divorce costs you more money. <laughs> it's cheaper to keep her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but that's what came to my mind. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I said that, but it, it was in my mind, so I said it. See, I need, I need to grow up. I would say this, grow in your spiritual development. What that means, start the growth track, crack, uh, crack. <laughs> track, it's not crack, it's track. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. You guys are having too much fun here, okay. Okay, put in the work to make it work, key number two. And number three, this is gonna be something that you've never heard of. Stop looking for your soulmate. Now, I'm going to talk about this for a second. The soulmate is this. The perfect person that's out there, and this, it's only, this soulmate thing is, is that there's someone out there, it's one person that can make me totally happy and whole. I'm going to burst someone's bubble. There's no one out there like that. Everybody out there needs work. I got to kind of like destroy this soulmate idea because we got a lot of fairy tales in the church too. Some of you guys are single because you're waiting for your knight in shiny armor. You're looking for the perfect one. Is he the one? That one doesn't exist. Oh, they don't exist? No. You mean God doesn't have a specific person for me? No. Okay? What you saying? No. Oh, I thought there was somebody for me. And, and see, someone right now say, it's, there is a soulmate. I married her. She's my sweetheart. I love her. I know you love her. And I know you're one, no doubt about it. And God has honored that. I'm sure you're enjoying a wonderful relationship. But you're married to her because you chose her. So, but I got dreams. Well, all, did, all God did was confirm your choice that it was a good choice. Now, it's very important for us to cover this because we got a lot of like, scandalous things happening in the church. I had a dream. You're my husband. Come here, boy. No. <laughs> and the guy's saying, I ain't had no dream. <laughs> but you just been eating too much pizza, girl. Okay. Now, where did this soulmate idea come from? It came from Greek mythology. 
this is, this is what history of soulmate. It comes from an alleged altercation between the human race, the human race and the Greek god Zeus. According to Greek mythology, we humans originally had four arms, four legs, a single head made of two faces. Because Zeus feared that the authority of the gods might be compromised by this race of beings, he decided to split each person in half. That is where we were separated from our lost soulmate. It is thought that our undying pursuit of perfect love is a result of Zeus and his scheme to keep us busy and far away from meddling in the domain of the gods. According to this account, a person's soulmate is the one and only person that can make us whole and happy. We will be less than happy with any other person. Now, what's the problem with this soulmate idea? Number one, when the marriage begins to become difficult, we view it as a sign from God that they must not be the one. Because if you were the one, this would be way easier. And I know you didn't come from God, so you came from the other side, the dark side, Satan, Satanas, you. And I rebuke you out of my life. Get out of my life, devil. <laughs> I will tell you, whoever you marry is going to have a, a, if they're believers, they're going to have, they're going to have God. And they're still going to have a little bit of the devil. <laughs> That's why you got to put some work in this thing. Any married couples can say, yeah, it's true, it's true. It's true, it's true. It's more devil than a little. I'll just, I'll just. <laughs> See, the dangers of believing the soulmate thing is that when our marriages fail, it's not a matter of us doing or not doing the right thing. It is that we married the wrong person. So you know what it does? It stops you from growing. So it's not that I need to change. It's not that I need to grow. It's not that I'm not doing the right thing or we're not, doing the, we're not practicing the right principles. It's just they're the wrong person. So let me get rid of them and go on pursuit of this person that's my soulmate that I missed on the first go around. The devil's like, Good job, dummy. There's no such thing. It's all fantasy. There is nobody like that. The only way you make relationships work is that you change. The only way you make relationships work that you, that is what you do. You practice God's principles. And when you practice God's principles, you get God's results. There's a problem with this Greek mythology. It causes us to quit. And continue looking for our soulmate. It's a wrong philosophy. It's kind of like this. The best we can do is cut our losses and return for the search for our soulmate. Because once we find them, we will, they will cause us to live happily ever after. <laughs> it's a dream. You're watching too many Disney stories. <laughs> and happily ever after. See... And the other thing it causes, this soulmate problem, it will stop us from developing a godly character and values. Now, why is it important to develop a godly character and values? I'm going to go deeper now. Parents, could it be that we're passing on a combination of Greek mythology and faith to our children? And then we're saying this, and, and we're making some adjustments right now. I think a lot of us are guilty of this. Lord, I pray that they'll marry the one person, the right person. I pray they'll marry the right person. And, and there's a problem with that. Because instead of praying that they marry the right person, you should be training them to be the right person. Could it be you're praying for something you should be training now, what happens when someone develops godly character 
and embraces biblical values. I want my girls, I got five girls, I want them to embrace godly principles through training and I want them to develop a godly character. Now, why is that so important? I don't need to pray that they marry the right one. I need to train them to make good decisions. See, when you have the right values, you choose the right alternatives. When you have the wrong values, you will make the wrong choices. It's not a luck thing. It's a skill thing. It's a godly thing. It's a character thing. If my girls value, I'm going to give you some of the spirit values. It is better to train our children to embrace biblical values such as love for God, honesty, humility, sexual purity, serving, generosity, church, making disciples, etc. Once the biblical values are instilled in our children, they will make their choices based on their values, including who they will marry. I had someone last week tell me, I prayed since they were babies that they would marry the right person, and they didn't. Now, the truth is, that's going to happen sometimes. But I would also, let's look at the values. Did we really train? Did we really live it out? Were we life coaches? Did we do what we're telling them to do? Or were we telling them to do what we don't do? And selling, sending them a mixed message. Was Sunday different than Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday? Or was, were you the same person here than you're at home? Because understand this, if you're different at home, you're sending them a message, we just go to church and we play church, we're not really sold out for Jesus. So you know what's going to happen? They will choose based on their values. If my girls like smoking weed, they're not going to choose someone that loves doing evangelism. If my girls love going on the clubs on weekends, (laughs) I'm Puerto Rican, it's a little salsa there too. This is going to be the problem. They're not going to pick someone that wants to live a life in the house of God, serving God and serving his people. But if my girls love God, they love worshiping, they love praising, they love Bible studies, they love the word, they love ministry, they're going to pick someone with their values. They're going to pick someone with their what? And someone that doesn't have their values won't really be interested in them after all. Well, they won't be interested in them for sure because they're going to be thinking, you know, your lifestyle doesn't match up with mine. So it's not going to work. So I don't care how good looking you are. Could it be that we're passing on a wrong value system to our kids and they're marrying based on education? They're marrying based on looks? They're marrying based on money? And they're not marrying based on values. They're not marrying based on character. And could it be that that guy that you think doesn't have his life, he doesn't have anything going for him. Could it be that that's the best one for your daughter because he loves God and he's serving God and he's going places. He's directed by God. So it's a godly character. This is who we want to build. Because if 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 we embrace biblical, biblical, principles and grow in our godly character you know what's going to lead to great decision making when you make great decisions you end up being successful 
If you never learn how to make great decisions, right decisions, you'll never be successful at anything you do because bad decisions will be a temptation to you. Decision making, good decision making is called wisdom and wisdom is developed. So say with me, wisdom is what? Say with me, I'm a student. I'm learning. I'm growing. Very important. Now, I'm going to end it with these two things. God gives us the power of choice. Say with me. God gives us the power of choice. We're still talking about soulmates. God gives us the power of choice. You know what that means? If you want to get married, get married. If you don't want to get married, you don't have to get married. No one has to get married. And no one, and, 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 and what's it? And no one, I don't need another one. You don't have to get married. If you want to get married, you get married. If you don't want to get married, don't get married. But what about my soulmate? They don't exist. You didn't let nobody down. They're not out there. This is going to help somebody right now. Oh, so you mean that guy wasn't my soulmate? No, he was a guy. And that was it. Oh, I thought I missed them. No, you didn't miss them. They, were, they don't exist. Look at the scripture. 1 Corinthians 7, 37. But he who has decided firmly not to marry. Someone say decided. And, and there is no urgency and he can control his passion. He does well not to marry. So if there's someone that's decided, that means you can decide not to be married. If you can control your passion, that means you're single and you're not lustful, it's okay for you not to be married. It's not saying I choose not to be married because I don't want to be committed. That's not what it's talking about here. It's choose, someone that's choosing not to be married because they want to go ahead and serve God at another level. They just don't want any distractions. I'm committed. Okay. But you can control your passions, good, don't marry. So the person who marries, his fiance does well. So if you want to get married, cool. If you don't want to get married, cool. You know what God said? It's your choice. Just one more thing. We can marry anyone as long as they love God. God says, I give you the choice who to marry. This is going to help somebody. A whole, bunch, a whole bunch of singles in here. Because you were waiting for that perfect person to come. And there were real people that were here and you never thought they were even an option. It's getting quiet up in here. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of marriages this on next year. Where are we It says. In 1 Corinthians 7, 39, it says, a wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. That's the deal. If her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone. Nothing about soulmate. She can marry anyone she wishes, but only if he loves the Lord, standard. So God doesn't tell us who to marry, but he does tell us the values that they need to have and their criteria for making that choice. So it's simple. If you're single, and you're a believer, this is your only option. Another believer that loves God. So what's the criteria? Does he love God? He's an option. What if he doesn't love God? He's not an option. And this is the problem. He's not an, he doesn't love God, but you think you're going to be the missionary. I'm going to win him over. You're not going to win him over. He's going to win you over. Because already you're compromising your decision making. And if you don't learn how to make decisions, you're going to always have this mixed up life. 
We need to get to the point that we learn what's right and then we just do it no matter how hard it is because I want to start getting different results. I am here to deny every single mindset, every single attitude, every single habit that's been self-destructive. I am done living the way I've been living. I'm ready for a new life with new results. How many received something from God today? Let's all stand up. Whew, first session. I'm going to dismiss in just a second, everyone. Did anybody learn something in the first session? Okay. Okay. We're all learning. Get the homework, do it. Wednesday night, you don't want to miss it. Wednesday night revival. Get in the habit of going to church. You used to party more than one day a week. <laughs> right? Come to church more one day a week. Be crazy. Wednesday nights are crazy. Jeremy Johnson's going to be here. Last Wednesday night, we were packed out to the gills, worshiping God in the house of God. This is a privilege that Wednesday nights are now open. Let's, let's worship God with this opportunity and learn and grow and bring your pen and paper. Before we leave, I want to give an opportunity for us to take action and make decisions. Jesus, while he walked on the earth, he had a way of calling people into his, a relationship with him. And he would say something like this, and he's saying it today to you. Come, follow me, and be my disciple. Jesus did not call people to be fans. He didn't call people to just be believers. He called people to be disciples. Now, what's a disciple? A disciple is someone that becomes a student to the mentor. A disciple of Jesus Christ says finally, I am done doing it my way. I'm tired of the results I'm getting. And I'm committing to now doing it your way. Lead my life. Be my Savior and my Lord. The moment you make that decision, you go from losses to wins. You go from bondage to freedom. You go from depression to joy. It's your choice. You go from hell to eternal life. You experience it. You go from being separated from God to having a relationship with God. Nothing like it, but it's a choice. And today, Jesus is saying, come follow me. And you come with your pain. There's couples that need to come up today. And as a couple, you need to get, you, both of you need to commit to a new walk with Christ. We're tired of doing it our way. As a matter of fact, the way we're doing it, it's not working. If it's not working and you leave here without action, this is what's going to happen. It's going to continue not working. Stop talking yourself out of action. Because if you talk yourself out of action, this is what you're saying. I don't want to change. I want to remain the same. We're not here. We love you. We are not here to remain the same. We are here to change. And God doesn't just want to rescue you and help you and establish you. He wants to use you to help some other people. It doesn't end with you. But either you're following Jesus or you're still doing it your way. You need to, we need to turn from our old way of thinking and living so we could have a new way of thinking and living as a choice. So there's couples that need to say, I'm ready to follow Jesus as a couple. There's individuals that are saying, I'm done doing it my way. And once we make that choice, this is what God, Jesus does. He forgives us of every one of our sins. You know what that means? You no longer need to live in your past. Everything we're covering here is not to put down the, mis or, or to magnify mistakes that you made in your past. That's gone. Water under the bridge. We are starting over today and building a new house, building a new foundation. We're starting.
But you got to get ready to take your first step in the right direction. It's action. Your first step in the right direction is action. Turning away from your ways, turn away from your thinking, turning away from your habits and say, I'm ready to be led by the Spirit. I'm, not, I'm tired of being led by my emotions, by my anger, by my pain, by my unforgiveness, by my addiction. I am done being led by the past abuse that I've experienced. I'm done. I want a new life. Many of you grew up in dysfunctional homes. And maybe you've been using it as an excuse for your own dysfunction. And you know what God's saying? I know you grew up in a dysfunctional home. Just use it as a lesson. Don't use it as an excuse. It's time to change. It's time to grow. It's time to make a decision. It's time to move forward. It's your choice. I'm going to count to three. And I'm not going to ask anybody to buy your heads and close your eyes this time. Because I believe if you're serious about change, you're ready to do it. And I, I've learned this. If you're ashamed to take action in front of people, this is what I do know. You ain't ready. Don't let your shame stop you. Take action. You'll regret the moment you didn't take action. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I'm ready to follow Jesus. I want a new beginning. I want a new start. I want to be forgiven of my sins. And I want to be empowered to live a new life. You come the way you are. You come with your pain. You come with your addiction. You come with all the abuse and all the betrayal and all the broken heart. Bring it all to God. He can help you. He can restore you. He can heal you. One. When I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building. I'm ready to, to, I'm ready to follow Jesus. Two. I need a new beginning. I need a new start. We need a fresh slate today. We need a clean slate today. This is my day. I'm ready to surrender all to Jesus. When I say three, raise your hands all over this building. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I see those hands. I see those hands. Proud of you guys. I see those hands. I see that hand. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. I see that hand. I see that hand way in the back. Proud of you, son. I see that hand. Proud of you. Anybody else over here? Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to ask you to do one more big thing for me. Will you give me the privilege and the honor of praying with you? And this is what I want you to do. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up here and I'm going to pray with you. And this is going to be the beginning of your new life. Believing without action causes no change. I want those that raise their hands, I want you to come forward. Or maybe you're a couple and say, we need prayer. If you're a couple, you need prayer, come on up. This is your day of change. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. This is your moment. This is your new beginning. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. Let's do this. I'm ready. I'm ready to do it God's way. I'm ready to trust God. I'm tired of doing it my way. Let's continue giving them a hand. It's awesome. People are coming to Jesus. I'm ready to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm ready for a new start in my life, in my relationships, in my future. still coming church they're still coming in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord freedom in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for freedom even now thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord let's pray with her awesome come forward a little bit it's still room here a little bit Okay, I'm going to tell you this. How many understand God is real? His power is here to transform lives, to set people free. There's people that came in here demonized. I'm going to pray that right now you get set free from those demons of anger, those demons of unforgiveness, those demons of addictions, those demons of lust, those demons of pain, those demons of abuse. In the name of Jesus, we speak freedom over you. And what we need is forgiveness. And we're going to receive it. And then when you receive forgiveness, you're also going to forgive 
forgive. We got to start over. We could keep hashing, up, hashing over and over and over what went wrong, and it doesn't solve anything. But it's time for change. And also it's time to apologize. I'm sorry, honey, for hurting you. I'm sorry, honey, for abusing you. I'm sorry for lying. I'm sorry for hiding it. I'm sorry. I want change, though. I'm done living that life, and I know I need to build trust again. But I'm going to show up these four weeks. I'm going to do what it takes to rebuild our relationship. It's going to take work, but I'm willing to put it, the work in. I understand. If you're still mad, I, I mean, I can't. I, I understand. We're going to be okay. But if you are mad, I would still recommend, I would say this, forgive. Allow yourself to move forward. Okay. We're going to pray right now. It is the beginning of following Jesus. Great marriages, I'm going to say this, aren't found. Great marriages are built. Great lies aren't discovered. Great lies are built. We're going to build. It's going to take work. You're going to show it to the house of God. You're going to do the homework. You're going to, you're going to journal what God's doing in your heart. Okay? We're going to do this together. Okay, I'm proud of every one of you that are here. Let's pray together. And prayer is just talking to God. That's all it is. You don't need fancy words. Just be real. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Say, Jesus, today I'm asking you to save me. Forgive me. Set me free. Make me a new person. I trust in you as my Lord and Savior. I'm done doing it my way and today I accept your call to follow you and be your disciple I am your disciple fill me now with your love with your Holy Spirit with your power set me free from all addiction depression anger unforgiveness hate I let it all go and I ask you now to fill my heart with your love give me new desires good desires today I am forgiven I am saved I have eternal life and from this day forward I will live for you for the rest of my life in Jesus name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer and you made it, meant it, I want to say congratulations online. If you said that prayer meant it, God bless you. Call us, let us know. Get your books, your whole packets. There, there's some packets out there. Um, get your packet. Get the full experience. The homework is not very long. It's four sessions. It's one session with four videos. And you could do it really in one day or you could do it in four days. It doesn't matter. Get the book. Study. Read. Get ready. Wednesday nights, be here. Let's go. Come on, let's get some extra credit to get some extra results. We need some prayer people up here. We need some P12 leaders, leaders up here. Make sure we pray with every single person here and get them covered. God bless you. Remember this, if God is for you, there's no one that can come against you. Love you guys so much. Session one down, three more to go. 